So this one, moss. I kind of like it for many reasons. Uh, for some reason, uh, it's just all mixed in the head and in, in the world. Like for instance, Victor is uh, from China originally and I'm Russian. And um, regardless, we kind of like uh, things from childhood or uh, something you just throw you back, uh, the memories. Uh, that memories bring you happiness, that happiness bring you something you want to collect or you want to smell when you're in a sad mood or even in a good mood or whatever mood, you just put it on or you put it on your hand uh, just to enjoy the moment. I like this because of um, a hint of patchouli, a hint of uh, nutmeg, you know, especially that cloying nutmeg. And um, I like this, uh, you know, like in overall, sometimes you cannot say enough of, uh, of the perfume unless you start using it. I, it's just my first uh, emotion. I would wear it in the evening or even uh, like maybe before the night time. It's like a relaxation, it's like a little meditation thing. Um, so you can tell me a little more about the notes here? Oh, it's a long list. I don't have... I don't have... Uh, well, just... in, in brief. <clears throat> okay. So, oh, the notes are... It has three major chords. So, which is the... The first one is the, the dark spice. It mm -hmm. has uh, uh, clove, nutmeg, cinnamon... And in the middle, you have a, a floral accord, uh, which is like mimosa, rose, lily of the valley, iris, and all those. And the bass note is the smoky accord, mm -hmm. which is the woody, vetiver, patchouli, um, guyac wood, nagamoth, and smoke. So all together, you create a very dark floral, not a bright floral. Oh yeah, dark floral, that's a, a good dark, expression. A dark floral, which is like the moth will stir when they fly at night. Mm -hmm. They have a very short life, they have about a week to live and they must mate. And that's why it's very dark and mm -hmm. at the end it flies towards the flames and kills itself. And so it becomes powdery and ash. This is what uh, I'm showing right now, uh, but it's my favorite of all. For some reason, I like it the best. Uh, I don't know why, because it's just like uh, that, you know, smell a little bit of dirt or something, and it's bring me again back to childhood memories. Uh, it, no wonder it's a winner. Can I say that? <laughs> In this I case. thought there is a, a novel writer or a book writer. He wears it to feel enclosed in a cave so that he got more inspired to write at night. Oh, yeah, so that's idea. Very interesting. It's actually, it's for people who want to write, it's a good inspirational <laughs> one. It's actually true. Yeah, true. Some people wear it to sleep because it, it's very uh, primitive. And I, like would, I would rather wear this to sleep. Yeah? Okay, yeah. That's possible. Yeah, but uh, it depends, depends on my mood. Sometimes I go to sleep with no perfumes just to give yeah. my nose a rest yes. and to find something new tomorrow. Because if I know tomorrow I'm going to smell a new perfumes, I kind of give it a rest. But if I'm really, really in a mood, I like that one to use the most. Hyrax is a celebration of the Hyracium note, which is the urine stones of the... Uh, hyrax that live in the mountains of the Af uh, in Africa. So that ingredient is not very used in perfumery. Mm -hmm. uh, most most of the time, people use uh, castorium from beaver and civet. Hyracium is not that used a lot because it's a very pungent and animalic and urinous smell. Uh, because as zoologists, we want to you know do something about, uh, you know, perfume ingredients that are animalic. So I created uh, Hyrex. But Hyrex is very tricky because if you use too much, it will be very 
dangerous almost mm-hmm. like you have just pee yourself mm-hmm. so the perfumer has a trick so he created a special accord that smells like hyracium without the urine smell mm-hmm. and we add a little bit of the real hyracium so that it's almost like you have a general feeling of what the hyracium smells like without the urine smell Mm-hmm. So we just track that thing. Yeah, so to kind of dilute it, kind of like neuter it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And we also want to create a very abstract perfume. And the end result smells a little bit like real wood. Mm-hmm. Because real wood is not very uh, easy to like. Not a lot of people like it. It's very poopy, it's mm-hmm. very um, animalic. But the end result actually smell a little bit like rocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the concept of the boulders and rocks in the mountain and it gets heat up by the sun. So yeah, so it's like it's, it smells like the, the sun is heating up the rocks and the smells is coming up from the rocks and also from the uh, hyracium rocks. So this hyracium it comes from a French company which they the hyracium from a U.S. zoo. Mm-hmm. So the zookeeper actually get, gathers those uh, urine stones <laughs> and then we send it to France and then they will take a tincture of it and then send it back. So, yes, um, so how long was the process? Uh, oh. From oh, oh. the zoo to... Yeah. Uh, that I do not know. It depends on the person mm-hmm. But yeah, they, they have acquired Сейчас я выползаю из торгового центра, чтобы показать вам видок Торонто. Вот так вот это все выглядит, когда я лазю по городу. Вот видите, Urban Outfitters, это такое молодежное место, здесь очень хорошие вещи, модные продаются для молодежи. А я иду вниз, мне нужно туда, вниз, 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 в сторону озера. Вот это Urban Planet. Значит, купи что-то и купи что-то другое за 5 баксов. Вот Сан-Лорес Маркет, и я, я показываю вам мой район. Все ближе и ближе я приближаюсь к дому. Хочу вам просто показать Flat Iron Building с другого ракурса про который я вам несколько раз рассказывала. Вот он, видите, в коричневом и зелененьком, он сам по центру. Вот так вот выглядит э, парфюмерный магазин. И смотрите, сколько ауры мы накидали. Это неимоверное количество ауры, не сосчитать. Сколько пришлось им пробников открыть, этих, э, не пробников, а э, этих тестеров. Я нахожусь опять э, в Итан-центре и 
сейчас зайду в Викторию Секретс.